Hello? Uh, do, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, where it depends on where you are. Um, let me know who's here. Type in, type in maybe your name and um, location would be nice into the chat so I know who we have online. So I can see we've already got 22 people. Webinar just started. Well, we still have people to join in. We already have 22 online. Right? Um, cheers from Germany. Hey, Renee, got your email. Thanks. Thanks. Glad you made it. It's been a while. Yeah. Apologies for my um, <laughs> just waking up. It's be yeah. It's uh, it's a bit early here. Good evening. That's right. Who else? Uh, um, Modesto. Hi. Where are you from, Modesto? Tell us. Hey, Ma how from Melbourne? Morning, six a.m. That's right, Mauricio. Argentina, wow, afternoon still. You're still on uh, Wednesday time. That's great. Sanjeet from London. Hey, Sanjeet. Michael, North Carolina. Hey, Michael, that's far away, USA. Hello, uh, Isaac. Uh, where are you from, Isaac? Tell us. Uh, Modesto is from Spain. That's cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, well, it's still, yeah, still. Um, Every, it's everywhere. It's pretty much Wednesday. It's just here. It's just me and Hao who are in Thursday. Uh, Thursday is looking good, by the way. Who else do we have? Nick. Hey, Nick from Tasmania. Nick's also a uh, same as us Thursday guy. Uh, Rick. Hey, Rick. Uh, yeah, it's great chatting to you on Udemy, by the way, Rick. Um, yes. So hope you found that broker you were looking for. That's awesome. Um, Modesto. Yep. I, uh, that's awesome. From Spain. All right. So we've got twenty. 24 people online. Whoa, that's so so cool. I'm so I'm so glad 24 people uh, <laughs> could make it uh, already. 25, okay, people coming in. So maybe we'll wait a couple minutes. We'll start on um, 6:10 maybe or 6 6:05. Oh, that's my time, of course. So um, yeah, welcome to my humble home. This is this is my uh, my apartment here in Brisbane. I've got the city just outside the window. Well, it's not right outside the window. It's quite, it's quite a way away. Um, otherwise, it's uh, this is my one bedroom working place. And um, what else uh, do I have here? Yeah, quite early, <laughs> but I'm really pumped. So I was, I was like waking up and a bit uh, drowsy, but then I realized, whoa, it's gonna be a cool webinar. We're gonna have so much fun. So yeah, you know. It's it's awesome that you guys are here, and um, so yeah, I got some cool, interesting things. This is my first webinar on Webinar Jam. I have done webinars before, but it was a while ago. It's been a while since I've done a, a proper live webinar, and uh, first one on Webinar Jam. And I just wanted to like along the way test out a couple of things, so I uploaded a cool, like short video. I got somebody made from South Africa. Good stuff, Isaac. I. Um, actually, if you guys don't know, I grew up in Zimbabwe, so uh, I've been to South Africa like 10 or 20 times. Um, my favorite city in South Africa, uh, Sun City. Yeah, tell me, Isaac, if you've been to Sun City, Sun City rocks. Sun City is the best place to be. It's like, like for those of you who don't know, um, when you go to Sun City, you have to go. Sun City is like, it's got... Uh, it's a city with one or two casinos and three, two or three huge water parks. Just when I, I went as a kid, so it's like all these water slides all over the place, and just like a few hotels, nothing else. It's just a city to have fun, really fun, fun place. Um, Emmett from Ireland. Hey, Emmett. Yeah, we haven't chatted in a while. How have you been, my friend? Mauricio, you have a made from Zim. Awesome. Yeah, doing good, Emmett. Um, yeah, I haven't haven't talked to you in, in a while. She she hit me up. It's funny how you guys um you know sometimes like I was chatting to Renee when I was just starting Forex Boat and then and then like we so, like you know we got our, we had our own things to do, and or, or Renee <laughs> Renee I might say had his own things to do, and uh, I haven't been in touch with him. Now he's back here, so it's good like you know to catch up once in a while. Hopefully you know we can get these webinars. Together. We'll have more opportunities to do that. All right, so we'll be starting in 10 seconds. We've been waiting five minutes. I think everybody who could make it made it, and uh, we shall be starting in 10 seconds. All right, actually, one second. 
All right, off we go. Um, so first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to um, say hi, thank you for coming. It's it's amazing that you could make it. Uh, first webinar, never, never ever going to be another first one. There will be a recording of this, um, hopefully. <laughs> so you will see the recording as well. Um, to start off with, let's uh, let's do a poll. I want to try out a poll. So I've got three polls loaded in here, and um, let's start with before we run um, the webinar about Fibonacci, right, and um, uh, <laughs> the other like applications of Fibonacci we're going to be talking about. Let's uh, run a poll on whether you've used Fibonacci or not. So I'm going to load the poll and. Is gonna, it says, have you ever used Fibonacci levels in real trading? And you can click yes or no. So I'm going to make the results public. So let's start poll. All right. So just click yes if you ever use Fibonacci, but in live trading and on a real account, demo doesn't count. And click no if you've never used Fibonacci on um, a live real account. Okay. So we have the results coming in. Okay. Interesting. So for now, 44% yes, 56% no. Okay, 50. Oh, okay, yes is going is going well above 55. All right, that's awesome. So 50 about about an even split so far. 50, 50, 46. Okay, whoa. Okay, no. More people saying no. <laughs> I really should stop this live commenting. The results are so unpredictable. All right. Okay. So I think I think we've got we've got uh, a statistically uh, significant result. So um, it looks like most people have not used Fibonacci on a live account. Sixty-eight percent say have they have not. Okay, so that's good. That um, that means that uh, those people who haven't will like learn something absolutely new, and those who have, um, you can refresh your knowledge and you know maybe pick up a few new skills or techniques from this presentation. Not just demo. That's that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to the side. You can't see my screen right now, so let's fix that up. Let me show you my screen. Um, as, as you've probably seen from my videos, tell me like if you have any problems with the sound, tell me because this microphone, like when I move to the side, can't you can't really hear well. Okay, so once again, bear with me. This is my first time in in one of these things. I did a live a little run through before but I'm not sure where the screen button is. Um, okay, I found it, there we go. So those of you who have seen my free tutorials can know that I have three screens, <laughs> so I gotta pick the right one to show you. Okay, so um, tell me if you can see my screen, just type in uh, like yes or something like that, please into the chat so like I don't and also, tell me if you can still see my um, camera. I'm not sure if I can. you can see my camera. Because it doesn't look like it. Uh, okay, um, so th that's my screen present. Yeah, you should, you, should be, you should see my screen right now. So we've got a bit of a... Um, slowing us a bit down because okay good good that's awesome um so let's get started uh I'm not i'm not sure if you can see my camera because somehow for me it's uh disappeared but uh no okay no cam okay thanks um i'm like i'll, I'll okay give, i'll give it another go let me see let me see if i can switch the camera on somehow uh, Okay, maybe maybe like maybe it says that maybe you can't have the camera on at the same time. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's get on with the presentation and then uh, I'll jump back on with the camera. All right, so what do we have? I've got a presentation for you guys lined up over here, Fibonacci numbers. All right, Fibonacci numbers. So let's get started with the history. I, I love uh, dig digging deep into things. So uh, of course I, I looked up some of the history of Fibonacci. By the way, if you've done my course on um, Forex trading for beginners, you might be familiar with some of these slides. So bear with me, good refresher anyway. So we'll get through them quite quickly. Um, don't get bored. <laughs> Leonardo of Pisa. So Fibonacci is not his real name. Uh, this person's real name is Leonardo of Pisa. Uh, Fibonacci actually means that 
uh, in Italian, it's it's like uh, it sounds familiar to a good son was born or something like that. I won't uh, don't take my word for it. I'm, I don't know Italian. Um, he lived in the 13th century and he, he's most famous for his Fibonacci uh, sequence of numbers. So the sequence goes as follows one and then another one and then any other next number is the sum of the previous two. So two is the sum of one plus one. Three is the sum of one of one plus two. 5 is the sum of 2 plus 3, uh, 8 is the sum of 3 plus 5, and so on. So if you keep on adding them, you get this sequence of numbers like that, and it like, goes on for infinity. Um, and what's interesting about these numbers, well, there's a lot of interesting things about them, but one of the most interesting things um, is that if you take any one of these numbers and you divide uh, it by the previous number, you, you'll watch, let's watch what happens. So 1 divided by 1 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half. 5 divided by 3 is 1.66. 8 divided by 5 is 1.6. 13 divided by 5, 1.625. So we're always dividing the number by the previous one. As you can see, the crosses are getting closer and closer to one specific number. So like there, um, there's a limit. <laughs> In the mathematical term, there's a limit to this sequence or to this ratio. And the number that they're all heading towards is 1.6180339 and so on. So there is a specific number where they're going. And that number is called the golden ratio. And they use a Greek letter phi to um, signify this or present this golden ratio. And uh, in short, it's 1.618 if you round it. So why is the golden ratio famous and like <laughs> why is it important? Well, it comes up in a lot of uh, interesting ways in nature. So it's uh, deemed by mathematicians and I can say this um, with uh, true validity because I did do a bachelor in applied physics and mathematics. So uh, this is the case. <laughs> All of the professors or at least 90% of them in my university uh, agree that um, this is a golden ratio that is a natural number. They even call it the natural number sometimes. So um, it comes up in very interesting ways in nature. For instance, if you take uh, the distance between uh, from the tip of your fingers to your uh, wrist, and then, uh, yes, Emmett, this has been recorded. <laughs> Just check this question. Um, anyway, so if you take um, the distance from your tips of your finger, uh, from your the tips of your fingers to your wrist and then from your wrist to your elbow, the ratio will be 1.618, just as on this picture. You can check it out, grab a ruler. It's the same for every person. You know, more or less, uh, there'll be some rounding there, but that's that's one thing. Uh, the next thing over here is if you take your phalanges on your fingers, the ratios between their sizes will be 2, 3, 5, and 8, just like the Fibonacci numbers, 2, 3, 5, and 8. The other one, oh, this one is a, an x-ray. So if that looks a bit vague, check out the x-ray. It actually has the bones. Uh, the bones fit those ratios pretty well. Uh, what else? You take any starfish in the world and you divide, you take that distance and you take that distance and divide one by the other, the ratio will always be 1.618. Interesting, right? So surprising places these things come up with. That's a Fibonacci spiral. Um, you take a just a squared uh, a piece of paper with squares on it like a mathematical piece of paper and you plot it plot the ones and twos and threes and fives and eights so that the numbers of Fibonacci in that way that they plotted here create a spiral um, maybe some of you have even seen this picture before so and then this is like the the way the spiral is created things like that happen in nature as well so this is a shell of a notilius I think its uh, shell follows that sequence. A lot of people disagree. They say it doesn't follow it exactly, or there are other shells that don't follow it. Who cares? It, this shell follows it, <laughs> and that's surprising. And then there are some um, galaxies that also follow this uh, spiral. So once again, there'll be a lot of people that, um, you know, some people are diehard fans of Fibonacci. Some people are the opposite, and they'll say, "No, actually, this is not true. Uh, not all galaxies, or you're not counting properly." Doesn't matter. The point is that it's coming up here, there, everywhere. Like it's surprising. It's too many coincidences in a row. Last one I really like is uh, if you take the DNA sequence and you divide one uh, that length, the width by the length between two consecutive uh, elements of the chain, 
you'll have 21 units and 34 units of measurement, which is called an angstrom. We won't go into angstroms right now. You divide by, oh, you don't divide one by the other. They're in the Fibonacci sequence. They're like there. So interesting, right? Um, now the question is, um, since it comes up so much in nature, it comes up everywhere, um, it's a natural number, maybe it's something that uh, is common with humans or it's something sitting in our psychology maybe since it's sitting in our dna maybe somehow it's reflected in market movements because let's remember that market movements are just also about psychology it's about um people you know battling who wants to buy who wants to sell and like there's a lot of um emotions going on in the markets and things like things like that so our natures our nature as humans is translated more or less in some way into the market so uh, yes of course there might be a trend just which is based on global things like uh, i don't know australian economy is going down right now so australian dollar is falling right um my australian friends and um, that's that's a general thing but those zigzags and those uh, fluctuations and anomalies that you see on the market a lot of them have to do with human psychology and you know when people are buying other people jump in to buy as well that's that's not a rational decision that's a you know fo follow follow the herd decision and that's more sitting in a hardwired in our brains so in this case can we maybe spot some Fibonacci things on the market as well and what is suggested is if you take a, uh, a, a movement, for instance, here there's an upward movement, and then you measure the true retracement to that movement. So once the price has moved up a bit and then um, traders are a bit not confident that it can keep moving, how far will it move down before it actually keeps moving up? Unle unless it's a reversal, of course. So in this case, um, if you measure the upward movement, then quite often, you will find that the retracement is actually 0 0.618. So it actually is equal to the golden ratio of the upward movement. And well, the golden ratio is 1.618, let me clarify here. And if you, that's another interesting fact about the golden ratio. If you take uh, one and you divide by 1.618, um, so you take the reciprocal of the golden ratio, you will, uh, oh, so you take the reciprocal of the golden ratio, one divided by 0 0.618, you'll get 1.618. And similar, one divided by 1.618 is 0 0.618. Very interesting um, property of the golden ratio this is. It's it's an exact, so it's not an approximate equation. It's an exact equation. And so in this case, as you can see, you get, you get the reciprocal of the golden ratio in your retracement. Actually, that's the number we're going to be working with more, 0 0.618. All right, so... That, that just illustrates that if you take the retracement as one, then the actual movement will be the golden ratio of the retracement. Um, it does happen. You can see these things in the market. Why? How can this help you? Well, um, once you, so let's say you sell in your downward movement. So let's say you're here. Well, you don't know about this. You know, you can see that the price has gone up to here. So, and then you decide to sell in the retracement, which I don't recommend doing. I don't <laughs> to be let's let's clarify. I I don't um I just I don't recommend doing anything. This is how I would have done it. So I wouldn't have um sell, sold in a uh, retracement because it's or there's a lot less likelihood less likelihood that I would because it's not a good thing to trade against a trend. Anyway, if you decide if you did decide to sell in the retracement, then you would know when to exit. You would be like, okay, so this retracement is going to be up to 0 0.618. And then you exit the sell order and then you get into the buy order at the point of the retracement. So when the price turns around. So the point of knowing these golden ratios is that you can predict or uh, expect when the price will actually uh, seize this downward movement and start the upward movement and kind of like see when the price movements are going to turn around before that actually happens. It really allows you to get in early and get out on time. Okay, so that was Fibonacci. Let's uh, end this show for now, um, and let's have a look at some Fibonacci patterns on the chart. So hit me up with any questions if you if you have so far, and I'm going to bring up a chart while I'm I'm doing this. Okay, where is one second? Okay, I'm just getting my account up one of my accounts up all 
Okay. You should see my chart now. Um, type in yes, please, if you can see the chart on your screens. Um, and this is uh, this is actually a live account, so I might also bring up a demo account just in case I need to, in case we decide to create a trade. Uh, okay, I really should have should have done this before. Anyway, where is my demo account? Yep, can I, can everybody see the chart? Okay, awesome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Okay, just give me one second. Bear with me for one second, and I'll get this up and running. All right, awesome, awesome. Yeah, everybody's paying attention. Love it, love it. Even guys in Australia. Okay, um, cool. So I've got a demo account here. If you want to conduct any trades, might be a better idea to um, work with this one so I don't create any live trades. Okay, so let's let's hunt for some Fibonacci. Um, what I like to do is I like to go properties and I like to take the grid off because it gets annoying sometimes and get rid of the indicator and then I'll show you a handy trick <laughs> if you go to um, tools where, where is it now you go to template sem save template and here you can see there's no default template but if you just actually so wait let's start with this if I open a new chart you see it's got the grid it's got it's got um, if I zoom in Right, it's got these bars, but what, what if I want candles, right? What if I want every new chart to be open with candles and without a grid? You go template, save template, and then you just type in default with a capital um, D, save. And now if I open any new chart, it'll be open by default with no grid, which is awesome, <laughs> and with uh, bars. So that's a handy trick if you want to take away uh, home because I know how... Um, other different people have different preferences and you might not want those the grid or whatever types of bars all right so let's um first chart i open right randomly australian dollar used oh by the way hello future <laughs> my aussie friends what happened what happened was it when was it um just yesterday yesterday right or monday um to 20 26 25th what is it today uh, so, oh, Monday 24th, what, what happened over there, right? This whole thing in China has happened, this this spike over here. Yeah, that's right, this is a four-hour chart. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> uh, looking good. <laughs> um, any other indicators with Fibonacci? That's awesome. Guys, um, uh, thanks for the questions. Unfortunately, I'm by myself right now, so uh, we'll have a Q&A part towards the end and let's uh, ju that's a great question lot just hold on to that and we'll answer that when we get there anyway back to fibonacci getting sidetracked um i will definitely ask for your feedback at the end of this webinar <laughs> and we see how we went all right let's um uh, draw a random so i'm clicking here um at the top there's a fibonacci ret retracement um tool and also you can go to insert and Fibonacci retracements, right? So you need the horizontal ones. And then you start dragging from the bottom of your movement. So I'm gonna measure this movement, right? This movement, I'm gonna, I wanna see how far this retracement went, right? So if I measure that, boom, boom. Okay, so that one went about half, halfway, so 50%. That's normal, that's, that's okay. This one didn't go all the way up to 0 0.618. That's fine. All right, how about we measure this one now? So I'm going to delete that. I want to measure this this movement, and I want to measure how much this retracement is, right? So I go boom, boom. And how much did this one make? So plus or minus, plus or minus 0 0.618. So of course, there's going to be um, some randomness in the market or some some noise that's the right term some noise it might go up or down but approximately there and um as you 
gather I'm a, I'm into data science. I'm a, I'm not a statistician. <laughs> I'm a data scientist. So for me, numbers rule the world. We got to find like we got to do a few more of these to find out. You know, is it really happening? So even we can even measure this one and check that one out, right? Well, all right. So that one is quite large but what you will find this is actually a great pattern we should come back to this one this is a great pattern what you will find they are derivatives of the Fibonacci ratio which are not as strong but um, let me bring up a calculator here so if you take 0 0.618 and you take um, the square root of 0 0.618 you get 0 0.786 right so we got to remember that one and if you take the square root of that you get 886 right so if I go to Fibonacci, this is actually, uh, where is it? Go to properties and I add a new level here, 0 0.786. And I'll give a description of 78.6 because it's in percentages. And 0 0.886, and I give a description of 88.6. And I click OK. You see they appear, these levels? And then now you can use them as well. They're not as strong as the Fibonacci, um, but at the same time, we will be using them further in this tutorial. So here you can see that this retracement was about 0 0.786. So if your retracement is heading towards 618 and then you see it's going through that level, you're like, okay, so where, where can it go up to next? 786, 886. And if it goes past 886, it's probably go past 100 as well. All right, get rid of that one. Let's measure the next one. All right, here. What is it here? So here, this is an interesting one, right? We, I've got better zoom in probably. I hope you guys can see these numbers because they're tiny on this Fibonacci scale. I'll try to put them on the black. It's good that we got rid of the grid, by the way. All right, so here you can see the full movement is 100% and the retracement is exactly 6.18, right? So if you're sitting here, you okay, you see this movement, you know it's an upward trend, you know it's an upward trend for now, <laughs> up until um, middle of May uh, 2015. Um, so you can see it's a bit of an upward trend and then it's a retracement and then you can see it's moving up. So you get in somewhere or let's say you see it's going up, then you see it's going down here, you don't get in yet. So you're like, okay, it's a retracement. Where should I get in? You can get in somewhere here or you can wait to get in here. But if you wait to get in here, you won't get in at all. So by looking at the FIBO, even, even when, you have, when you don't have this part of the chart available to the right, let's, let me, this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna use a calculator to block part of the chart. All right, this must be something new in Forex. Anyway, so when you see this bar, you're like, okay, where's it going? Where's it going? When, when's it going to turn around? When's it going to go back up? Because it is an upward trend. You're like, oh, probably it will go back up. So you can either guess or get in early and then uh, you won't get the whole upward movement or you can get in late or not <laughs> wait to get in later and you'll never get in. So where is your point that you should be aiming for? Well, the point is Fibonacci 61.8. Look for that. Uh, well, I look for that anyway. And and also you can use these ones in case it goes through. But here it's a good example. It went like up, then went right down to 6.18, stood there. So you can see it's a it's a, it's like a resistance level. And then it went up. Okay, and let's and let's do another one. Let's see how much this upward movement is uh, in terms of uh, units of this downward movement. So let's go bam. How much? How much is this upward movement? It's the golden ratio. Once again, there's a bit of spiking anomalies, but you can never guess exactly, or, well, predict exactly. So even if you get even if you get in here and then you're like, get out here, <laughs> I would be the happiest man on earth if I could uh, do that nine times out of 10, right? So if you get in here, you've used the Fibonacci ratio, like, okay, this looks, bam, it's hit the rate, it's hit the level. It's actually even come back. Okay, that's selling me something. It is a strong level, this 0 0.618. I probably should get in on this. Uh, you get in on this and you're like, okay, when do I get out? When do I get out? When do I get out? All right, it's going very high. So, and then you measure your 1.618 level and you're like, okay, I'm going to get out as soon as it hits this yellow line. Even you put even a take profit there or just before you put a take profit. So, you know, you, you have some uh, spare, like you put a safe take profit. Remember we put take profits before the um, sub resistance lines. Oh, that, by the way, this was a support line, not a resistance line. Even I, I get that wrong sometimes after eight years. Um, so um, 
you put the take profit a bit before. If it was a stop loss, you'd put a bit after. Anyway, so here you would get out over here just because you would know in advance, you would know, uh huh, the price is going to go up to there. You would like, if you have no other reference point, use the Fibonacci. It is, um, it's always a good reference point. And that is how our Fibonacci works. Uh, we can open any chart uh, whatsoever. Where, did, where was this thing, by the way? It was in May. I, I want to mark it because that was a cool pattern. I liked it. Um, there it is. So I'll just mark it here for now so we can come back to it. So that's how the Fibonacci works. We can open pretty much any chart, and I encourage you to do so and look for these um, patterns. They, they come up on any time frame. It's easier to find them on higher time frames because there's less noise. Uh, but really, you can find them on any time frame. All right, so what, where are we going? 6.30. All right, uh, let's see what else have we got. Uh, we've got the polls. I'm just looking. We've, that poll finished, by the way. 68% said no, have never used Fibonacci. 32% yes. Uh, and poll, okay. Uh, so let me see what else we have. Pop-ins. I, I want to do some experimentation. All right, okay, cool. Um, I think I might, no, oh, that's funny because I did load a video. I loaded a really cool quick video into here so I could show you guys, but somehow it's not, it's not letting me right now. Um, give me a second. I will find it. Can you type in like a question for now? So if you have a question, just type it in and maybe I'll take one or two questions on Fibonacci for now. Um, and at the moment, I'm just going to quickly... I'm just going to quickly go find my video. Um, all right, I think I you got to upload it to YouTube before, uh, there it is. There it is, my beautiful video. Um, maybe it has to be public. <laughs> that would be funny if it has to be public and I didn't make it public. Okay, public. There we go. All right. So, what do we have in terms of questions? No questions so far. That's awesome. That's that's awesome, guys. I'm I really like that. That means everything is going as it should be. Okay, got the video. I really wanted to share with this with you. As you know, Forex Boat still in the process of forming everything and. Um, you know, like as a company or as a as a more outside platform for people to chat and so on. I'm gonna play a video. Oh, okay. How's got a question? All right, let's get to the question. How do you decide the top and bottom of a FIBO? Um, what? Uh, like, I'm not sure about uh, the question. You well, I would say look at the zero points. Let me know if this doesn't answer the question. But as we discussed, you look at the zero point six one eight um, level and then. Uh, that that will kind of tell you where the top and bottom is. There are other levels, like here, here once again, that's the movement down, the movement up about 1.618. So as you recall, we will set the take profit a bit earlier. So you look at these um, levels. During Q&A, can you please place some pending orders using feeble levels? Thanks. Yeah, we can do that. Sure, we can do that during Q&A. All right, I'm going to play a quick video. Uh, one, we'll test out the functionality of a webinar jam, and also you can tell me what you, you think. All right, let's play this. It's seven seconds. All right, what did you guys think? Um, let me know what you thought. That was um, a quick uh, logo motion video that I got made up on Fiverr. And uh, it was, I think it was pretty awesome. Firstly, I think it was pretty cool. So let me know, first of all, if you saw that. And uh, second, it, did you like it or not? Of course, it was not a bit, it wasn't exactly aligned, centered, but I think it was pretty cool. Anyway, and we shall move on to um, our uh, next topic, which is uh, harmonic patterns. Du -du 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 All right, <laughs> cool bat, cool bat, awesome. Thanks, Renee. Um, 
All right, so harmonic patterns. Uh, what are harmonic patterns? Harmonic patterns are patterns, you know, like head and shoulders and uh, different channels, and you, you got different sorts of patterns on the market. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks all, for all the love with, for the video. Um, harmonic patterns are basically patterns which are like kind of like the normal patterns that you'd find or you'd hear about. I don't even use them that much. So I can't think of many. The wedge, the flag, the head and shoulders, the double bottom, the triple top, whatever. But they are much stronger because they have... Fibonacci numbers hard coded into them. Let's have a look. So there's a harmonic pattern right there. If the market was going down, 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 and then it started going up, and then it started going down, and then started going up, and then started going down, then if it follows the Fibonacci ratios, not in just one of these movements, not in just two, but in all three, then it's a very strong, as you can imagine, it's three times as strong as what we were just looking at. And that means that here there's a good likelihood that it'll start going up. Let's um, look at how this is formed. So the first movement is an upward movement. This is many bars, of course, or might be any time frame, basically. So the first movement is upward, and then the second movement is downward, and it's 61.8% of the first movement. So it's um, that golden ratio over there, or reciprocal of it. Then the second movement is 0 0.786, so the square root of 0 0.618. That's the second movement. And then the third movement is 1.618, the golden ratio of the third movement. So CD over here is 1.618 times BC. If that happens, then, well, this will automatically occur because if you just multiply those, and then you can expect that the price will go up. How can you use this in trading? Well, if the price has done that, then the price has done that. Let me use my, my favorite tool here again, the calculator. So if the price has gone up to here and then it's gone up to here and then you see this, you're like, okay, so this actually happened. You see that this happened, this happened, and you're like, okay, it's going down. Where is it going to go up to? Well, first of all, from what we just discussed, you just measure this and then you're like, okay, probably if this is you know the trend, this is not just a retracement, so this is the main movement, then it's going to be 1.618. All right, cool. I already think it might go there. But then you realize that, okay, wow, this, this, and this, it works together. So then you're like, okay, it's most likely going to be 1.618. So you're not just using this part on its own. You're using this whole picture together um, that it's forming, and that way your pattern becomes really strong. So let's look at some pictures. First of all, I want to show you... Um, how much I care about you guys. So if you go to um, what are they called? Patterns, harmonic patterns. They're called harmonic. So if you go harmonic patterns and you go images and you go, this is the main image that is used in the world right now for harmonic patterns. Most you'll find it like that's why it comes up very often on Google. The, these are the patterns. Then I was like, yeah, that's not that's not good enough for <laughs> to share on my webinar with my favorite students um, or friends, I should say, my favorite friends. Um, so I made up my own set up last night, and I made up a picture for you guys. You can download this picture. Uh, just go to the forum. I'll show you here where you can get it. If you want to get it right now, by the way, you can. So forum forexpo.com, and then here you'll see forex trading systems. So go in there, and in here is harmonic patterns, and I just uploaded last night over here. So that's the high, low resolution. High resolution is in a zip file here. Uh, if you're not registered on the forum, you might have to, but you can just get it here and have it on your desktop wherever you like. So these are the four patterns we're going to be looking at. We're not even going to bother about the other two, which aren't really Gartley patterns. By the way, these are called Gartley and Pesavento patterns because um, Gartley... Um, he came up with this first pattern first time. So there's four of them, and they have very interesting names. First one's named after Gartley because he came up with it. Then there's a crab, there's a butterfly, and there's a bat. And it might sound very childish, but <laughs> they are they're really powerful. Guys, I'm honest with you here. Um, <laughs> they are amazing patterns. I've always um, liked them. I did some research on them. I did like... Uh, I did a trading journal. That was my very first trading journal. One and a half months, I was trading these patterns. It was so much fun. Anyway, so let's have a look at a couple. Um, the the crab. So here you can see 0 0.382. That's um, that's another golden ratio. We won't derive all of them right now, but 
as just like six seven eight six um and eight eight six that it's derived from the six one eight so the first movement the second movement has to be smaller than the first movement it's always the case but it has to be between three eight two and six one eight so it can even be 0.5 so anywhere between those two numbers second movement is between these two numbers so bc compared to ab and so that's one two three so the fourth movement <laughs> is like like in classical music the fourth movement cd is got to be huge that's why it's called a crab because the last leg is the biggest out of all the, the patterns you know how a crab sometimes has a very huge uh, one arm and a smaller other arm. That's how you remember this one. This one has a huge last arm. So it's kind of preparing. It's it's getting very sm smaller and then even smaller. And the last one shoots out because it's so much bigger than the, the one, the preceding one. And then it's going to go up. Uh, similar, you just turn it around, it'll go down. That's the opposite. That's a bearish crab. The butterfly, that's the one I encountered the most. I've seen so many butterflies on Forex. And it's probably the easiest one to find. Um, 786, uh, but then between 382 and 886, and then 1618, 2618. So it's not as condensed as the crab. As you can see, these movements are not as small. It's not preparing for that huge jump at the end. And um, that's that's how the butterfly is constructed. The bat is also quite common. So butterfly and bat are the most common ones that I've seen. Here it gets quite small. Um, then it gets quite small, so similar to the crab, but then this last leg doesn't uh, shoot out as much. It, uh, it's, it's not as big at the end over here. And uh, finally, so you can see the difference here is that this last part is smaller than the first part, and here it's the opposite, and you can see that by this last ratio. This is 1.618, the last part compared to the first part, and here it's 0 0.886. And the last one is Gartley pattern. It's um, it's actually one similar to the bat. The last leg is smaller than the first leg, um, but somehow it's it doesn't come up that much in the market. So the ratios are here, but to be honest, it's not the most strongest out of them, and it's also not the most frequent. So I would kind of uh, I would stay away from the Gartley if I were you. You, you know, it's you can trade it still because it's it's got FIBO levels, but it's much better if you find one of these, the bat or the butterfly. Let's have a look and see what we can find. Yeah, let's go. Let's go animal uh, <laughs> or is it safari for my friend from South Africa. Let's go on a safari. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? All right, so this one I marked here because it looks uh, pretty cool. So let's let's check it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna right click trend line properties parameters take off the ray go back common high so make it thick so you guys can see and um, what I don't like is that my chart is in the front chart on foreground now. there we go so I put the chart on the background all right so I'm gonna just mark this one up because it does look like a um, Gartley pattern and then we will measure it up there we go so let's see how did this work out over here for us Doo -doo -doo -doo. i'm gonna i'm gonna somehow keep these two things on the screen at the same time so we can look at them and find out which one it was all right let's measure this animal up where is my zoom okay there we go so first leg what do we have we got seven eight six right let's write that down um, i'm gonna take a text box here and i'm gonna type in whoop 0 0.786 and maybe make it 20. and i don't really like the color so let's make it gold all right seven eight six is the first one so that's well not not really there that's probably between these two right so then here what do we have we got 618 right so it went down by 618 so let's copy um that i'll be here <laughs> that's the one that goes here all right 618 and then the last one how big was the last one um, well, it didn't really make it to 1618, but let's call it a 1618. It's uh, as as you as we discussed, you get these fluctuations sometimes, and 
so I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit like, which one is it? Because I haven't done this before of this pattern. This is like, this is not a prepared show. So let's see. It might not be any pattern. So not to, uh, for you to have high expectations. So 0 0.786, right? So which one does it look like? Uh, basically, it's could be any of them, but it's it looks like it's not the the crab or it's not the uh, the bat because these ones are generally the end earlier so it could be it looks like a butterfly it could be a gartley even though you would you'd have to go above but doesn't look like a gartley right so um then what's this next one 618 right so does it look like a butterfly so we've excluded these ones probably exclude this one so it can only be a butterfly at this stage <laughs> so can it be a butterfly 382886 yes it fits in between those two and it's a golden ratio so any golden ratio or any fibonacci ratio that fits in between the two is good right so here it's 618 and the last one 1618 perfect this is a perfect fit and i, I love it i just i love when these butterflies fit really nicely like that and what happened what happened after it boom australian economy went boom <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> if if only uh, what's his name Tony Abbott. <laughs> oh, sorry guys, it's an it's an inside joke between me and my Australian buddies. If only our prime minister Tony Abbott knew about this butterfly. <laughs> oh, he could. <laughs> so much could have been uh, money could have been saved. Uh, just funny because Australian stock market was devaluated by sixty-two billion dollars last week. So. <laughs> just because of one butterfly this is a fun webinar <laughs> anyway um all right so that's that's your butterfly so you kind of get what i'm saying that once you're here and then you're this is the four hour time frame i mean there's no way you can miss this you're like sitting there and then you see bam okay a day passes and out there and then it's going up and then you measure this up if you're active in the markets and you're like you measure this up you're like oh wow it's a, it's a derivative of, of the golden ratio cool and then you measure this one up. Excuse me. You're like, oh, this one's also a derivative of a golden ratio. You might even you might even be trading here. You might be like, okay, cool. I'm going in on a buy, and then you get out and you don't go on a sell because it's against the trend, or you get on a get on a sell but a smaller lot, and then it goes down, and then and then you're sitting here, and then it's like, uh, and then you like goes up, and you're like, whoa, that's three golden or three Fibonacci ratios in a row. What could that mean, like? Alarm, <laughs> alarm, alarm. That's, you know, a, a red flag or a light, a light bulb should go off at that point. And you're like, whoa, that's so cool. All right, so something big is going to happen. And yeah, like, it's it's insane, right? So you were, it was going up and then this butterfly happened and the butterfly just created this huge, massive, or it was associated with a massive downturn. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about psychology. Of course, you can't predict like the, the uh, crash in a stock market using these things but still maybe like maybe this wasn't the stock market crash maybe these are just people their psychology going or or maybe you know the world works in mysterious ways maybe we can predict stock market crashes um before we get too excited about this there are certain levels that you should you know take um where you should where you uh, like these patterns tell you to say to take profits and stop losses um can you guess <laughs> can you guess where you would need to set to take profit or stop loss it's not hard to guess you just take the golden ratio again so one six uh, zero point six one eight you would take you put your take profit here that's like the conservative target and one point six one eight that's the um, more aggressive target so uh, whichever suits best for you, you can even like uh, how a split your order along the way or something like that that um usually this if after if it's a proper butterfly what i've seen is 618 is usually hit and after a butterfly usually even 1.618 is hit the other ones i i i tend to stick to the conservative target uh stop loss um that's a good one because like where can it turn around to i would honestly i just take like one of the legs and then I just copy the size of the leg, so 100% or 50% of the leg. Okay, we got some interesting comments here. <laughs> uh, he should. Uh... All right, I'll, I'll get to the comments in a second. Um, there's quite a few. Um, all right, so what what are we looking at? So we, I don't want to make this too long. So we're getting to 50 minutes. Somebody asked me to create an order, a pending order. I can totally do that. This is a demo account. Happy to do that. Although this one's only for 30 days, so. Um, and I opened it yesterday. My, you know, like if we want to check their order later, 
I, I'm not sure if it's going to be there. Maybe it will. Um, but I don't want to open an order just ad hoc. I don't want to open a... I would love to open a um, a butterfly order. By the way, this is not the only only guardian pattern. You can check check other ones. And, you know, I, I sat here. I think I, I went through the euro dollar last night or which one of them did I go through? One of them anyway, somewhere. Not this one, I guess. Um, I found a couple. But just look for them on your own. You've got the picture you, or you can get the picture. Let, I would I'd really like to open an order for a butterfly, right? Uh, but I'm not sure if we can find one here. Uh, like you, you gotta spend some time to find one, or or you gotta wait. And what I what I also what I also uh, find useful is that they they or a kind of something I've noticed is that it's easier to find them on higher time frames. Like I don't like trading higher time frames. I like M15 um, between M15 and one hourly, but they are easier to find on four hourly time frames because once again because there's less noise on those time frames because. Um, you kind of like can see uh, you, like the movements are actual movements, not just uh, random anomalies. I don't know. Well, there's something here that looks that looks familiar, but that's not it. Then, so this one over here, this is what the used OGP. You can see down, up, down, up. Yeah, it looks like like a Gartley pattern, or something. Um, all right, so we won't look for a butterfly to open a pattern now because that'll take take a while. Let's uh, let's do a Fibonacci. Somebody asked for pending orders. I got a feeling that it was it was how uh, no, that's not that feeling. How asked for pending orders? I got a feeling that how wants to find out maybe how to place pending orders. Maybe that's maybe that's what what you're after. Um, let's do one over here. So what's this? Um, okay, dollar Swiss franc. And also, kind of like I, I like to stay away from currencies that that are experiencing like drops like that because um, unless you're already in the market, you're asking for trouble. So let's go for dollar franc or where is my dollar franc? Okay, there it is, chart window. Um, so, so you see, like what was happening here? This is an interesting one, right? So, it was an upward trend. Now it looks like a downward trend or a retracement to the trend. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, it looks like a downward trend. Looks like it started here. So, uh, I remember that. That was fun. Anyway, um, down, up, down, up. Let's so let's see how far it's gone. Right. So, this movement. If if it's a retrace, if it's not turning around, if it's a retracement, which actually personally right now I have a feeling this is going to, this might not be just a retracement, might be turning around. But anyway, let's say let's say hypothetically, for how um, that you it is turning, it's it's a retracement is going to turn around. So I can see that it's gone down, and now it's let me zoom in a bit more, and maybe even hourly time frame might look more comfortable. So. Where are these FIBOs? All right, so you can see here that it's it's coming close to this 6.618 level. And the question is, will it turn around or not? Or if it does turn around, where is it going to turn around? Well, let's say we expect it to turn around here, 618, right? Um, what you can do is you can set a pending order for it when it hits a pending order to go down. So we have four types of pending orders. Buy stop, sell stop, buy limit, sell limit. Buy stop, it goes through. So if you set a buy stop here, you're expecting it to go up. A buy limit you have to set at the bottom. That means when it goes down, it touches. There's a limit to the movement and then it goes so it goes through. So here we need a sell limit because we want we don't we're not expecting the price to go through our sell stop, sell stop order. We're expecting the price to hit our sell limit and then go down. Um, so two ways you can set it. Like if you're sure this is going to be a like a turnaround movement and how can you be sure well if it's part of a butterfly then you're more sure than if it's just by itself so if you really want to um, get in on this movement like if you're not sure you would probably wait and then see what's going on and then you would uh, wait let it let it take it to <laughs> get in on the turnaround but if it's uh, if you're confident let's say hypothetically we're confident we want to sell a, an all a limit order. Hey, by the way, you can right click and just click sell limit, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go new order. I'm going to measure this up, all right? So 95 um I don't know. You set it a bit before just in case it doesn't get to the to the go get through. So 95900. I want to sell let's say one lot or let's say 0 0.5 lots. 
Um, so I want to sell, you click here, pending order, and then I want to sell it at one five nine double zero triple zero. and it has to be a sell limit. And then so let's say you've calculated your risks and everything, and you know your stop loss, like here you can actually use the feeble levels for your stop losses. So you, as we saw, if it doesn't turn out at 618, it might turn out at 786, it might turn out at 886, depending on what your volume is and what your risk um, uh, appetite is. You might set your stop loss here or here. So let's say I want to set it behind, behind 786. So 96, um, let's say 9700, 0 0.97, and take profit. Well, then you take your movement. So from here, it would have moved up to there, right? So conservative is 618, aggressive six, 1618, or you might have some, oops, you might have some other resistance levels or uh, support levels that you're uh, monitoring. So in that case, let's let's just set it, uh, let's set conservative. So 9469, if, if you expect this as a trend, keep this going to keep going, then it'll keep going. So you would set it here, but we're going to just set it conservative, 947, stop loss, uh, so that was a stop loss, 0 0.9947. Oh, Comment, um, so this is a FIBO test. Um, yeah, that's it <laughs> for how I'm going to put your name in here. <laughs> okay, and then you put an expiration date. So you think, okay, if it doesn't go through here, it looks like it might get there in the next, um, you know, couple of hours. So if it doesn't get here by the end of today, then probably it's not going to get there anyway. So what's six fifty four? So six hours. Let's give it. Uh, let's give it six hours, please. Um, okay. What did I do wrong? Nine. Give me a second. So this is a sell limit. Nine seven zero zero. And nine. All right, guys. Give me a hint. What did I do wrong? Oh, that's right. Why did I? Ah. Oh. How did this happen? Um, where are we setting it? We're setting it here. Nine five nine five nine nine. How did that happen? Zero dot nine five. Oh, nine five. Right. Okay. There we go. All right. So there we've set a sell limit order, and once it hits that, it'll go go through. It'll either keep going and you know hit our stop loss over there. Or will go through and go that way. That's how you set a limit order. All right, 657 here in Brisbane. Uh, guys probably have to go to work. Um, let's take some questions, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back, jump onto my uh, face. <laughs> that sounded wrong. I'm gonna jump uh, back onto um, like showing you my camera. Oh my god, how do I do this thing? Ah. Uh, Give me one second. There we go. Finally. All right. So that's me. Hi again. Um, I'm going to throw in a poll for you guys. I'm going to start a new poll here. Um, have you ever used? Okay. Um, how do you rate this webinar on a scale from one to five? Let's load that. And uh, do we, <laughs> this is going to directly affect whether we want more webinars or not and make this poll public at the end. All right. Cool. So. Give it to me. Um, tell me everything. Don't don't spare me. If you didn't like it, press a zero. Press a one. In fact, I should have put a zero in there. <laughs> All right. So how are we going? Um, Joan says, how do you shortcut to use crosshairs on FIB? Okay. You shortcut hair across. Just click the middle of your mouse button. That is a cool one. It took me about a few months to figure that one out when I was starting for it. Just click your mouse scroll button, and the crosshairs will come up. I asked myself how to measure throw by the way guys throw the questions in if you have any questions this is q a time chuck them in and uh we'll, we'll answer some questions and then we'll um finish this webinar off um renee i always ask myself how to measure these lines and now i finally know it's of course the fibo tool face palm <laughs> good one renee um i'm glad you picked something up from here uh he should have studied maths uh, who should have studied maths is that, is that renee uh, I love this show, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Modesto. Uh, that's that's what I was aiming for. Kind of like uh, make it more casual, you know, like no, not not serious. We're we're friends here. What's the point? Uh, uh, it's it's the bearish butterfly, right? The one we looked at. Let me just let me just bring it up. Um, 
the one we looked at, I think that was a bullish butterfly, right? No, the one we looked at, Sasha, that was a bullish butterfly because, oh, bearish, bearish. Oh, that's right. It's a bearish butterfly. My bad. Um, it's a bearish butterfly because the movement's going down afterwards. And actually, I marked it in red, so it makes sense. And also, um, another thing I wanted to tell you guys, that uh, thanks, Sasha, for bringing that up. Uh, the bearish, uh, the Ws, the bearish ones are easier to spot. Somehow, well, for me in my head, somehow it, it's just been like that always. That it's easier for me to find the the Ws than the Ms. I don't, I don't see the Ms. Like, Focus to see the bullish patterns. The bearish ones just come to me easy. It might be different for you, so let me know how you how you go with that. I'll bring the questions up here. So, okay. Um, I got I got here only ten minutes ago. Oh, Justin, that's that's, um, that's not a problem. You'll just uh, just look at the replay afterwards. It's gonna it's gonna if you register, you're gonna get an email with the replay. I think in like thirty six hours or something. One is bad and five is great. Yeah, five is great. One is bad. Rate the webinar, please. Five is great. Rene, I voted four. I really liked it. It was fun to watch and I learned something. But you always need some head room to grow, right? <laughs> Thanks, Rene. Thank you, Rene. Uh, really keep it coming. I'll be next time again with big pleasure. Awesome. Uh, Tony Abbott. <laughs> Nick, is that in reference to what we talked about? <laughs> the Australian um, economy going down. Uh, Justin, is this being recorded? Because we'd love to see it since I got. Yeah, yeah, Justin, it's definitely being recorded. Everybody who registered got the link. So if we have webinars in the future, I really hope we will. Um, make sure you guys register because that way you will get a link after um, the recording is done. This is the first one, so I, don't, I have no idea how it's going to how it's going to look. Um, <laughs> you know, hopefully it'll get better with time. Uh, okay, Justin, uh, Johan, uh, are Gartley patterns not reliable? Why don't you like them? I like them. I didn't say I didn't like them. I really, really like, oh, the Gartley pattern, the, the Gartley pattern itself. Uh, so there's two different, Gartley patterns as a whole is a refer, refers to all of those four patterns because kind of he was the first person to discover one. He wrote a book about it and so on. So Gartley patterns are all of them. I like Gartley patterns. The Gartley patter, pat, pattern, singular, by itself, I don't like it because I've rarely found it, and when I have found it, it hasn't been, never, but with the Gartley pattern, it hasn't been a great success rate for me. So you know, maybe fifty percent, maybe, which is not good at all. Sixty percent for for a FIBO, fifty percent is not a good percentage, uh, um, good result. Uh, also, um, like as I say, I'm 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 into data science. I'm a data scientist and. For me, it's all about numbers. So if I can find, if I know that I can find a uh, hundred butterflies, right? Then and statistically, seventy percent of them are successful. I can say that I am quite quite confident with the butterflies because I've seen seven out, seven, seven out seventy out of a hundred be successful. So the probability that th they're successful by chance, like accidentally, is very low. Whereas the Gartley, because I've only seen maybe five in my life. And maybe even if three of them are successful, I can't say with certainty, you know, that uh, they have a 60% success rate. Or even if four out of five are successful, I wouldn't be able to say that 80% success rate because I've only five. Maybe it's by chance. You know, this the um, p values. <laughs> oh, I'm getting into stats like the probability. It's not a stati statistically significant result for me. So that's the only reason why I don't like the Garfield pattern. Uh, I do like the butterfly and the bat. Justin, okay. Uh, Johan, yeah, yeah, that was, that was funny, right? Yeah, that was good. I, I, the the comment about um, Tony Abbott and the butterfly. <laughs> That's what we should call this webinar. <laughs> Vlad, can we use some indicators together with FIBO? Oh, yeah, great question. Thanks a lot, Vlad, for bringing that up. Um, good indicators with FIBO. So FIBO already gives you... Uh, FIBO already gives you... What does it give you? It gives you levels, right? It gives you support resistance levels. So you don't want another indicator that would give you uh, support resistance levels. So you wouldn't want like a GAN channel or something else because they kind of interfere. You want something else that gives you something like momentum or um, uh, should I say vol volume or, or like gives you like an, an RSI would be good, right? An RSI or a stochastic would be good. So that, something that would tell you, um, like an oscillator that would tell you where the market is sitting in terms of uh, 
um, perceived price and demand. So if you combine that with a um, butterfly pattern, or you were looking for, for right? so uh, if you combine that with a, a FIBO, so FIBO gives you the levels, and then you actually see that the market is oversold, right? The um, RSI is telling you that you know the the market is oversold. You you gotta you gotta be um, you can be in a position, and the people are selling you the same thing. Then, then combined, those two can you know uh, complement each other. So I would go for something like that. Maybe uh, RSI, stochastic, um, maybe just even the volumes indicator. So if you see there's a lot of ticks going on, that means something's going to happen. So something that will tell you an additional, give you an additional perspective on the psychology of traders at this point in time. Um, I hope you can hear me. I moved away from the mic a bit. So what else do we have? Uh, thanks, Kilo. It was great. I will look forward to the next pattern. All right, guys. So we're going to end it over here. Uh, what have we got in a poll? So I got 38%, uh, 5%, 38%, 4%, 25%, 3%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 